Hello and welcome to this video where we will be testing out the brand new Inquisitor's Staff. This is the third combat style weakness weapon released into the game following the Hex Hunter Bow and the Terrasaur Maul. The Inquisitor's Staff is extremely powerful exclusively against melee users. I'm going to break down what I think of it overall as well as at a bunch of individual bosses too. I'm going to talk about which places this thing works at and which places it doesn't and then at the end I will give you my final verdict on if this weapon is good. Let's get right into it. To start things off, what exactly does this staff do? Against all enemies, it will be a tier 80 staff, on par with the chaotic staff. But it has a passive effect where it will greatly increase your damage and your hit chance against monsters that are classed as melee type. When you're fighting a monster that it works on, you'll see this icon on your buff bar. Now, if you hover over this icon, it says that it will deal 12.5% increased damage, but that's actually not all the staff does. It also increases your chance to hit by an additional 10% as well. Not sure why it isn't included in the tooltip, but hopefully that changes at some point. The damage boost is pretty easy to calculate. The range is extremely small on it, and while using this weapon on the monsters it works on, you'll be receiving between tier 96 and tier 98 damage. In almost all situations, this will end up being right around tier 97. The damage boost works just like a prayer, so it's an invisible 12.5% boost at the start of your damage calculation. The hit chance boost works a little differently, as it's applied at the end of the calculation. As a result of this, it's actually more significant than the 10% that is advertised. Depending on the boss you're fighting, the type of overloads you're using, your prayers, and anything else that could affect your accuracy, you can expect between tier 89 and tier 93 with this staff. At times it will be better than a Staff of Sliske, and in the absolute worst scenario it would be slightly less accurate than a Nox Staff. Now, despite the large accuracy range, and despite the potential for it to be lower than that of a Noxious Staff or a Staff of Sliske at times, the damage increase is so significant that at the bosses that this thing works on, this staff will be better than a Staff of Sliske every single time, no matter what. Now, let's go to some of these bosses and try this thing out. When you're using the staff, there are two main ways to go about it. Either you're camping the staff at all times, which would mean you're not Fortic auto attacking, or you're using this staff in your Forticking rotation. There's been a misconception going around that with this staff, you're actually better off not Forticking, and that is not correct at all. Although your raw damage may be better with the staff, Fortic auto attacking gives you access to stronger abilities. It allows you to use both Sonic Wave as well as Concentrated Blast, and weaving in your auto attacks also greatly benefits your ability cooldowns, as instead of using two abilities every six ticks, you're using two every seven ticks. So really, in terms of hierarchy, you've got four ticking with the staff, you've got four ticking without the staff, and then after that, you would have camping the staff as your main weapon. Before we get into the testing, let's talk about perks. For the duration of this video, my staff was augmented with Precise 6 Ruthless 1, as well as Aftershock 4 Equilibrium 2. These are the best in slot staff perks. I first brought my Inquisitor staff to the heart of Gilinor. Within the heart, the Inquisitor staff works on the entirety of the Vindicta fight, as well as the entirety of the Hellwar fight. It works on Avarice, who is one of the two Twin Furies, and it also works at Telos. But we're gonna move Telos to the side for now. I'll be going into detail there a little later on. Considering the difficulty level of Vindicta and Hellwar, I will be staff camping for this portion of the video. So I will not be foretaking with the staff, I'll be using it as my main primary weapon. The hit chance was very solid, and you honestly aren't likely to notice a difference between this or a Nox staff or a staff of Sliske. As for the damage, it's noticeably strong. This staff isn't gonna unlock god mode for you at these bosses, but it will likely take a couple seconds off your kill times if that's something you're interested in. With this staff, I was able to consistently finish off both Vindicta and Hellwer in somewhere between 36 and 42 seconds. This includes kills where my adrenaline potion was on cooldown. Those kill times don't really compete with melee, so overall the staff may be best in slot as the magic weapon here, but if you were looking to farm these bosses for an extended period of time, magic is still not gonna be the superior style here. Still, it's not a bad option, it's relatively user-friendly in terms of minimal switches, minimal effort, and still very good overall damage output. There's not much more to say about the main four bosses of God Wars 2. It's definitely not a necessary weapon in those areas, but it will likely improve your kill times by just a little bit. I'm also going to mention, in terms of relics, I'm currently using the Darok Relic, which increases my damage dealt the lower my life points are. For that reason, you'll see a lot of the time I'm sitting between 3 and 4,000 life points, as there's a relatively low risk of death there, but you still get a lot of damage increase. I might make a full video on how to get the most out of it, but for now, all you need to know is I am using it in this video. 
After God Wars 2, I also wanted to try camping the staff at Araxor, and the results were pretty interesting. I found that even without a Nihil, I was able to get to 100% hit chance, but I did need a Reaper Necklace to get there. With the staff as my main weapon, I had no problem at all getting through the first phase well before the web burned down, and actually, if the boss had had twice the amount of life points, I still think I would have got them down. That's always a pretty good sign, and so long as you put a bit of time into your rotation, you should not have any issue finishing off that part of the fight. A lot of people don't do Magic Araxor because there's this misconception that you take a lot more damage when you're maging because of the bleed. I also wanted to showcase that you can actually just kite the boss. Uh, so long as you're on full manual and you're manually inputting your abilities, you can run away and deal damage to Araxor without him even being able to hit you. So that's what I was doing here as that's kind of the proper method for Magic Araxor. You basically run back and forth, Araxor shouldn't be able to attack you too often, and if Araxor isn't attacking you, he also won't be able to spawn minions either. So you're gonna see I get rid of the first mirror back spider. As soon as it goes down, I'm gonna go right back to kiting the boss, and I can actually just camp soul split here. I was able to get phases two and three done in about a minute and 10 seconds, which is pretty good, but then we run into our problem. Although Araxor in its melee form is listed as melee type, Araxi is not. Araxi, no matter what combat style you bring in, is always going to be listed as magic type. And for this reason, unless you want to use a tier 80 staff for the final phase, which I would not recommend, you kind of need to bring another weapon. For me, that meant switching to a staff of Sliske for this phase, and it is certainly problematic. That's one of the major constraints on this weapon. It works extremely well at the places it works, and it will be better than a Staff of Sliske, but the Staff of Sliske works everywhere, and this thing just doesn't. You're going to see that trend continue as we move into Solak. I did a lot of Solak with the Inquisitor Staff, and I'm going to go right ahead and say it performed a lot better than I thought it would, especially as a main weapon. I did a number of duo Solak kills just Staff camping, and I was very surprised to see how many different things this Staff works on. Not only does it work on Solak himself, but it also works on the ground roots that spawn around phase one. On top of that, it works on the arms, the legs, and the blight core as well. So pretty much everything in phase one, you're good to go. Out of the whole fight, there are only two things that the staff doesn't work on. The only two items are the blighted eruption on phase two and Erethor. Erethor is not a significant issue if you're basing in a duo as only one person has to go in and deal damage to him. But if you're in a larger team and you're a DPSer, you would still likely need to bring another weapon alongside of the Inquisitor Staff for that section of the boss fight unless you want things to go significantly slower than you'd want. The most surprising thing overall with me staff camping this weapon at Solak was that with some rotation practice as I'm not very used to staff camping, I was actually able to one cycle both the Blight Core as well as No Realm Phase 4. This is something that is generally considered a melee only strategy where you've got two meleeers and it's one of the reasons why people hybrid at this boss. This was particularly surprising to me and my expectations were that this would not be very easy to do. But with a little practice we were actually able to do it three times in a row and the same could be said about the No Realm. It's not like we were getting these no realms by a couple seconds and almost failing. We had plenty of time here. So even if you make a couple little rotational errors, you're still probably able to get this done so long as you know what you're doing. The no realm is still a riskier method of going about the fourth phase and it is considered a high level method. But I would say now it's definitely not combat style locked to melee. If you've got good DPS rotations, you're probably gonna be able to give it a crack with magic. I also did several hours of speedy four-man Solak, and here it's harder to tell the exact impact of the Inquisitor staff because not only am I hybriding, which means I've only got magic gear on half the time, but I'm also four ticking, so really I only had the staff on for 25% of the fight. Still, it will perform better than a Staff of Sliske in this instance, and the kills were extremely smooth. We were averaging just under a six minute kill every time, which for me anyway, that's quite fast. I think a lot of people consider regular Nex to be a ranged only boss, and functionally it kind of is. If you make an instance at normal Nex, the boss is going to spawn with the deflect magic prayer active for certain phases of the fight. Because of this, ranging is the only real feasible way to do the boss. That being said, if you really want to have a fun time, you can go in without an instance and you've got a 50-50 chance of the boss spawning praying ranged instead of magic. The minions will still be immune to magic attacks, so I brought a ranged switch for them, and outside of that, 
This staff absolutely tears. I had an absolute ton of fun with it, although I know it's not something a lot of people will do. It's a little tedious having to constantly hop worlds, and you also don't even get a boss timer because you're not in an instance. That being said, if you were in a pinch, you had to get like a reaper done or something, you could absolutely use this staff for it, and you would have no worries. I mean, just look at this blood phase. It's over in like three seconds. The damage is solid, it's easy to keep your debuffs on, and honestly, I enjoyed this a lot more than I thought I would. It's not every day you get to go in mage next, and overall, I had no complaints. Also in the category of probably don't do this, but if you want to, it's kind of cool, Calphite King. For whatever reason, despite Calphite King having three separate forms for each of the three combat styles, all three of those forms are considered melee type. I believe this is because the green special attack that is active on both the melee phase and the range phase is a melee attack, so he's classed as melee the whole time. Because of this, you can actually hit quite accurately on both the melee and the magic phases, camping the staff. On the range phase though, you're still going to splash quite a bit. Still, I was able to get some kills in the 1 minute 40 second range without a slayer task, just camping the staff. I certainly wouldn't recommend it, and even Calphite King as a boss is not one of my favorites, but this worked out. Honestly, a little better than expected. If you buy one of these and you get a Reaper or something similar to the next situation, you could definitely get it done. Full disclosure here, I am not very good at Angel of Death. I've been pretty much avoiding this boss like the plague since scaling came out as I found small teams a lot more fun, but I know the majority of people do sevens, so I joined a sevens team as a mage entangler and yeah, it went pretty well. If you see me making mistakes here, please no flame. This literally was my first hour of sevens in over a year. Considering I'm not an expert at this boss, I thought I'd mostly just talk about where it works and where it doesn't. The staff works on the Angel of Death for the entirety of the fight, but it will not work on the minions. This isn't really a big deal as most teams you'll have a Chinner and the Meleers will be using Cleave and Hurricane as well on the entire stack. So generally, it's not the end of the world, but if you were doing something a little more niche like some duo AOD, you would probably want to bring another staff or at least a different set of magic weapons specifically for the minions. Outside of that, I was surprised to find that the Inquisitor staff also works on all of the pillars. They don't actually attack, but I think by default, a lot of things that don't attack in this game are listed as melee type. Because of this, you can definitely get away with using this staff as your main weapon and it will perform very well. Next up, it's time for raids. At Beastmaster, the staff has some pretty good coverage. It works on Korms as well as Krauer, although it will not work on the Tuzpat. It will work on the Chargers, the melee based Eretz, and of course it will also work on Beastmaster. Specifically for BM, this staff is a very good option, but the problem you run into is the majority of people do a full raid, so Beastmaster followed by Yakamaru. And at Yakamaru, unless you want to waste an invent space on a weapon that will exclusively work on the melee jellyfish, you're probably not going to want to bring this thing. It will not work on any of the pools in the main fight or on Mirage phase. For me, that meant I brought my Staff of Siske and I used that instead. After liberating the Gobies, I brought my Inquisitor's Staff to Telos. I used it both as a 4 ticking weapon and I also did some kills where I was camping it as my only weapon that was dealing damage to the boss. Overall, I was very impressed. At Telos, it works on all five phases of the boss fight, so it's not like you need to bring or introduce Staff Switchscape. You bring the one Staff and you're going to be more than good to go. When staff camping with the Inquisitor staff, I was able to complete 500% in rage at a kill time of just over 4 minutes and 40 seconds, which by my standards is pretty fast. In my more standard kills and as a 4 ticking weapon, I was able to complete 500% in rage in 4 minutes and 15 seconds and 999% in rage in 4 minutes and 19 seconds. Those times are between 10 and 15 seconds faster than my previous best from before I had the staff. It's likely a combination of the staff being strong, but also me getting a little bit better at those enrages as I continued testing. One thing I do know for certain, the Inquisitor's staff is better than the staff of Sliske at Telos. In terms of hit chance, it didn't feel significantly worse than the staff of Sliske, and the damage is noticeably higher. Being able to release a 15k detonate on phase 1 is just ridiculous, and my phase 4 skips were extremely consistent as well, where I don't think I missed it a single time in over 8 hours of Telos. You also might notice in some of these clips I am playing on the German language servers. The reason for this is input lag. Even though the German servers are based in Germany and there's significant ping, there will be a lot less input lag that's based on the world population. Generally, trying to PVM on a world with over 300 players is going to be extremely difficult. So hopping over there, even with the increased ping, the game will run a lot smoother. I really hope this gets addressed at some point as it is slightly frustrating trying to play the game in a language you don't speak, but I owed you guys a staff testing video and this was the best way to get it done. 
I'm also going to mention that the Inquisitor staff does work at Virago, and it will be better than a staff of Sliske there as well. I ran into some pretty extreme hit chance problems because I was using a Ripper Demon instead of a Nihil. The Ripper Demon doesn't attack, but it does boost your damage dealt, and if you're doing a good job of keeping the boss debuffed with both a Stadius Warhammer and a Guthic Staff, the Ripper Demon will be better than a Nihil there. Cash and I were a little rusty and didn't do the best job debuffing the boss. Because of this, we did quite a bit of splashing. Damage wise though, this thing is really solid, although I would be lying to you if I said I noticed a significant difference over how I was doing Virago before. Overall, the Inquisitor's Staff is a very interesting weapon. It is undoubtedly better than a Staff of Sliske in the places it works, but it does not have the same versatility. I'm also going to mention that although it's better than a Staff of Sliske and better than a Noxious Staff as well, it's not so different that you're going to take 10 or 15% off your kill times with this thing. It's between a 2 and a 4% DPS increase over the current best. Sometimes when I make these videos, people say, well, I bought this staff and it didn't take a minute off my time, so clearly it doesn't work. And I even saw a post on Reddit last week where someone said that it didn't work on Phase 3 Telos because their Phase 3 didn't go faster. Gotta remember, it's a slight upgrade to a Staff of Sliske. If your rotation doesn't change, your kill time likely won't change by that much either. Still, with how it currently works, it is the best staff in the game at a lot of the most relevant bosses in the game, and it's a lot of fun to use. I also didn't get a chance to comment on its appearance, but I really like what it looks like. It's kind of like an ancient, ancient staff, and it looks the part. Anyway guys, that is all I have for you in this video. I really hope you enjoyed. If you did, feel free to leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you thought, and as always, I will see you in the next one.